the Pan and Scan podcast with Joey Hollywood and Aficionados Chris. Hello, everybody. I'm Joey Hollywood. And I'm Aficionados Chris. Hey, I got my name right. I think <laughs> that, is, that is who I am. Yeah. Didn't we miss a week, Joey? Yes, we did. I was working an awful lot and it just couldn't be done. But now my now, now I have more free time. So more videos and more podcasts. Joey Hollywood is a sellout and got a real job. <laughs> Can't make any of that YouTube money with hundreds of views of video. Oh, man. When I came back to YouTube, I knew my viewership would go down because, you know, I took a year off. I wasn't expecting it to to literally be under 100 views a video. I think it's very strange that I have 9,000 subscribers and 60 views on some videos. Maybe you got to make another feminist rant video or talk about another YouTuber who bit the dust. <laughs> you got to you got to give the people you got to throw them that bone. You could talk about well, I, whatever the hell down the rabbit holes talked about before but but better. I do have a video about uh, a YouTuber in the pipeline, and I will never make political content ever again. So if that's what you subscribe for. I'm sorry, not not doing that anymore. We're uh, we're talking about blue bugs today, not the blue beetle, but it's on the Joey. Arguably, Joey is far more obsessed with than I am. Although I consider myself a fan of this property. Yes, talking about the tick and all forms of the tick. From its humble beginnings as an underground comic, if if it was an underground comic, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was an underground comic. Okay, good. Because you know, it break uh, to sort of throw that in. Was that a trend? Because obviously, I think a lot of people who might remember the tick. In fact, that's something I want to say uh, before in the comments. Well, what was your introduction to the tick? Was it the cartoon? Probably, I'm assuming, because a lot of these viewers are probably around our age, right? So. The Tick would have been on Fox Kids back in the day. Yeah, uh, that that's where I first saw the Tick. I, I I got to know the Tick through the cartoon, later the sitcom, and I went back and read the comics. Did you actually see the sitcom uh, when it aired, like the original uh, Fox one? Yes, actually, uh, my bedtime was at I believe eight back in the day, and the Tick came on at nine, and I begged my mom to let me watch it, <laughs> and. Then after that, it became impossible to know when it was on because it was just on at different times and different days of the week. Yeah, but devil, I, I, you are now my bitch. That 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 really upset me when I first saw it. I was like, the tick doesn't swear. I, <laughs> I still don't like that the tick swears, but I love the tick now. But as a kid, it was a betrayal. Was I was like, betrayal. what? <laughs> That's a, that's, that's a different YouTuber. Yeah, so let's see. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the tick cartoon was 94. Right, I, I want to say that's correct. I, I can look it, it up. It feels like it was ninety four. Now, my original point is uh, maybe I'm the only one that remembers this other show, and I, I hope I'm correct because I think this was also on Fox Kids, uh, which was Sam and Max Freelance Police. I swear yeah, that, that was Fox. That was Fox too. Was yeah, there I like that. was there like a minor like trend of taking underground comics and turning into Saturday morning cartoons? <laughs> Yeah, because there was Big Guy and Rusty. Yeah, that's right. One. Big Guy and Rusty. Holy shit. What was that? Like 2001? Mm, I don't know. That was a that was a Frank Miller comic, wasn't it? I believe so. I think that came out around the same time as the Godzilla TV series. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds about right. Which I think was 2000? Had to be 2000. Because the... I want to say 98. Well, no, because 98 was when the film came out. It definitely didn't come out the same year. I think it came out like I a. It did. If anything, maybe a year after. It's been a while. I own the complete series of the Godzilla cartoon, but I don't remember the year. But I always thought that was interesting because obviously uh, Sam and Max didn't last very long, although it's a great show. And The Tick lasted three seasons, I believe. Yes. So I, I wonder, like, going by the time frame, like, was The Tick what started that? sort of trend to see like hey this this show's uh, doing well in the ratings let's see what other underground comics are out there that we can turn into cartoons yeah i 
I'm, I don't know, because there was, uh, I believe the Max was also an underground comic before it was the MTV show. I so believe was the, it was, yeah, although I don't think that was a kid's show. No, no, no definitely not. Um, then there was Spawn. I feel like, I feel like the 90s, there was this big boom of, like, alternative comics. Oh, shoot, wasn't there, there was that cartoon, I forget his name, who was that comic book? Uh, the green guy with the fin on his head. Oh, the well, that's from Big Bang Comics. That's probably one of their own uh, only non ripoff characters. But I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he he had a cartoon. I think that was on like UPN or something. Because I think oh, it gosh. I think it aired on the same block as the um, Mortal Kombat cartoon at the time. <laughs> they actually they had like this event crossover thing where like every single cartoon on that block had the same overarching story about like some kind of like orb that went from like show to show it was ridiculous and that's really funny i, w- I wish i saw that <laughs> yeah it was it was ridiculous god it was years ago but uh, well, you, know what that, you know what that reminds me of do tell there, there was a, I forget what channel it was, but they owned like all the big sitcoms at the time, you know, Friends, Seinfeld, all that. Yeah. And they wanted every episode that night to have something to do with a power outage. So the whole night, every sitcom, the power would go out and they got to Seinfeld and Seinfeld said no. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so the, the whole night. All the power's going out, and you get the Seinfeld, and it's just a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like the image of Jerry going like, no, no, we're not doing that. We <laughs> 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 already have our season ready. <laughs> so, like, with, back to the topic, the Tick. So, uh, at least with me, I have yet to read a Tick comic. I knew it had comics. In fact, I'm pretty sure when I was a kid, I saw some of the comics on like a rack way back in the day uh probably at tower records or something it's where my dad used to work in the 90s and there used to be like a little comic section um and the the tick's not hard to to miss like you you could spot him <laughs> in, in a comic book but yeah definitely you've obviously read more of the comic books than i have so like how did that like i think you said earlier didn't you say you you seek out the comic book because of the cartoon and the, and the live action show. Yeah. Um, interesting thing about the comic is it was supposed to be a 13 issue series, but at issue 12, Ben England, the creator of the tick dropped it to work on the TV series. <laughs> so the comic book wasn't even done by the time the TV series was getting made. They, they made a 13th issue, I think in 2004, but it's not from the... It, no one knows if that's how the comic was originally supposed to end. There, there's some interesting things about that. Because the Tick in the comics is more... In the early comics is more interested in fighting and not so much justice. And you can you can see that in the early episodes of the cartoon. Where it, it, it feels like the cartoon is where the Tick really found who he was. Yeah, in the, in the 13th issue that was printed years and years and years later. He acts more like the Tick in the cartoon. Than he does in the comic. I think that that's interesting. Yeah, I definitely would like to see Ben Endland finish it and not you know some other guys. But the, those those first few issues are they're the groundwork for something really really fun and cool. They're they're more direct parodies than the cartoon was. Like there's a direct parody of Elektra and the 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 hand from from a Daredevil. There's a direct Superman parody. And th- those are really fun. Some some of the uh, issues were actually turned into episodes in the animated series, specifically the one where Chairface Chippendale tries to write his name on the moon. <laughs> what I love about that actually is that, uh, fun, like uh, skipping ahead, is like um, the Tick. I feel has has influenced things, but not necessarily the things you think it would. Because I remember telling you this uh, that. Um, Raphael Waksberg, I believe his name is. Uh, I, it's some funny name. Uh, the guy who made the Netflix show BoJack Horseman, which I'm sure you've probably not seen, but you've definitely heard about. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch it for years. Uh, he was actually interviewed not too long ago, and one of the like in one of those like, you know, oh, what what 
influences this or something. And they asked him, you know, what are your top 10 influences for Bojack Horseman? And in the top 10, he mentions The Tick. And he specifically points out a specific episode because uh, he says there's this one episode where the character chairface Chippendale is trying to write his name into the moon and then for the rest of the series the C and the H are still in the moon for subsequent ep- episodes <laughs> and as, and he, he mentions that because it's not really a spoiler but there's like a plot line in one episode of Bojack where the D in Hollywood is stolen and so for the remainder of the series, the D is never put back and it's referred to as Holly Woo for the rest of the show. <laughs> he was so basically the ticks running gag of continuity was an influence for Bojack Horseman. And in a way, a kind of influence like serialized programming, you know, stuff like binge watching. Because I think I think you even mentioned to me is that the tick has like a something of a of, of a serialization going on in its cartoon. Not like to the extent of other shows, but it, like there is a benefit of watching them in a row. Yeah, there, there's not like a climax. There's not like all these threads come together at the end. But right. There's, there's a benefit to watch because in season three of the of the animated series, they introduce the ticks uh, ticks dog, which is named Speak, because every time the tick gets hit in the head, his dog speaks. <laughs> And it's a it's it's this running gag of like the dog's like really really gross, and he takes it to the vet, and then it it's revealed that it's not even a dog, it's a capybara. But that 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 reveal is until like five episodes later. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so so for like four episodes, you th- he's like, this is my dog, speak. <laughs> and so you think it's just an ugly dog. <laughs> I remember when I was at your house that we watched the um, episode where most of the characters have their minds swapped. And there's yeah. like this this like character called Tongue Tongue who's just a being made entirely out of tongues. Yeah, it's like his hands are tongues. His hands his are tongues. tongues. He ha- <laughs> and he has a tongue in his mouth, but his body's a tongue. He has but one <laughs> tongue to taste an entire world. <laughs> oh, man. The thing is, too, is I feel like season three is like I have like split feelings on season three because I feel like it's the weakest season, but it also houses some of my favorite gags in episodes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because like season two, I think is like season. I, I don't know, man. It's difficult for me to choose between season one and two. I guess I quote season one more, so I guess I'll say season one was my favorite. Well, it's kind of like how there are shows where, like, that may not be your favorite season, but you definitely have, like, favorite gags from those seasons. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I guess an example, uh, the first season of SpongeBob SquarePants, I wouldn't say there's a lot of, like, favorite episodes, but there are a lot of gags in that season that I really like and still, like, look back on and, and laugh about. But I never am like, oh... Yeah, I want to, like, marathon the first season. <laughs> but then again, I guess a lot of people don't say that about most shows, because the, I guess the idea is that the, the show is supposed to get better after its first season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has that ever happened? Have there been shows where, like, the second season was terrible compared to its first? Heroes. Well, I never watched Heroes, so I can't I can't vouch for that. Season one, of, I was obsessed with Heroes when it came out, and then season two happened, and then, like... It was this weird thing of, like, I could just see everyone's interest die around me because season two was was really bad. Now, uh, because I I think the cartoon, uh, at least for me, is that I I watched it as a kid. I can't say that I, like, watched it, like, every day, but I definitely saw enough of it as a kid that I can say it's nostalgic sort of thing. Because maybe you understand, but... There's kind of like that when you're a kid, you can't like I always hate when people are like, oh, man, I, I loved that show growing up. I watched it all the time. Really? Because at least when I was growing <laughs> up, you weren't allowed to watch a lot of TV. And oh, yeah. When it, I, yeah. Yeah. So you, you understand. You understand. When I was a kid, I was allowed to watch TV under very specific circumstances. Exactly. And all. Oh, and your parents had to watch the show beforehand to make sure it was okay. Even if it was rated for children, my parents would still want to watch the show first because I I, I think it was because at that point they were kind of 
kind of religious, not really like, you know, ultra conservative or anything, but like, like, you know what I mean? If my father had it, I remember this, my father hated, uh, two shows that I really liked as a kid, uh, Hercules, the legendary journeys and Xena warrior princess. <laughs> and he hated these shows because he thought they were blasphemous. <laughs> I had a very similar situation with my grandma. Yeah. With, uh, the prequel to legendary journeys, uh, young Hercules with Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I watched it with her once. And, uh, after the episode, she wanted, she gave me like a lecture on like how, Greek and Roman mythology isn't real. Yeah, yeah, I, that was kind of something like that. I don't even remember like the conversation, but my father like chimed in about why he didn't want me watching Xena. And I'll be honest, I wanted to watch Xena because Xena was pretty. Lucy Lawless in that Xena outfit is wonderful when you're six years old. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what like virgin children she has been bathing herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she was she was in uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead recently. I went, Jesus Christ! Like, you're what are you doing? You, you're, you're yeah, still, she like, just dropped, doesn't age. You, she's dropped that gorgeous <laughs> still. It's amazing. But I remember it's like my father was chiming in about like, oh well, uh, something something about you know, and there's multiple gods in the, in this, but we only believe in the one God. And it's like, I don't. Yeah, I'm six. I don't understand what you're. talking <laughs> thank you i'm six um but no i remember that so with that whole thing about uh not being able to watch any show like like i obviously never saw every episode of the tick as a kid because being in a blue collar family and extremely uh, i'll be i'll be uh generous and say we were middle class but we were basically borderline poor <laughs> so we didn't always have cable and Mm -hmm. I actually remember is that my grandmother lived like two miles away from our house and she would have cable. <laughs> so some of the shows that I would grow up watching that you obviously couldn't get on, you know, basic TV, I'd have to be at my grandmother's house to watch like Nickelodeon and stuff like that. And obviously Fox kids, cause you needed cable for that. If I'm not mistaken, really? if I'm not no, mistaken, I... you needed cable for Fox kids. Well, maybe because I watched because I didn't have cable growing up either, and Fox Kids was a it was a six hour block. My house only had you know the four channels: ABC, NBC, CBS, and PBS. So because mm. I think it was like antenna or something like I don't remember. I, I was like five, so I just remember that I I remember vividly that I could not watch Fox Kids for many years at my house, but I could at my grandmother's house. And that's interesting because Fox. Uh, here we have a local channel called KMPH, and it's basically the Fox channel. Mm. I mean, I could be misremembering. Hell, for all I know, my parents probably blocked the channel <laughs> so that I couldn't watch it. <laughs> but I, I, I recall not being able to watch it for most of my life until well, we got a cable package. That might have been it, because I remember as a kid, there was a lot of uh, controversy about the Fox channel, because it showed really? more adult. Yeah, I remember people would always talk about how it was kind of more adult than some of the other channels. Fair enough. Because it showed The Simpsons. Oh, oh, my family hated, like, they would shut off The Simpsons when I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I even remember the episode. It was the one where Homer joined the NRA <laughs> and they shut off the episode. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I remember as a kid, though, um, I took my cartoon watching very seriously because I was only allowed to watch cartoons on Saturday. Right. And when I was at my grandma's house, because my grandma, my grandma let me get away with murder. I, I mean, that was kind of similar. Like, I obviously did watch stuff on. I mean, you, you had to watch stuff on Saturday mornings if you were a kid. Because it was the only time you had to do so. <laughs> I used to wake... I had an alarm set for Saturday. I'd wake up at 5 in the morning, which was far beyond... far be Like, cartoons didn't come on for another couple hours. And I would watch I Love Lucy, <laughs> The Andy Griffith Show, and uh, I think The Three Stooges came on. Like, all that came on before cartoons. Well, you know there was, like, an infomercial. If you're gonna play anything before some cartoons, Three Stooges, man. Like... That's a good way to start. Yeah, and and like an infomercial would come in, come on. I'd run to the kitchen, I'd make myself some cereal, and I'd run back. By the time the infomercial, by the time I got did all that, the infomercial was over and cartoons began. Fucking a. And I remember I had like my my hand on the remote because I used to switch between Fox and WB. 
luckily there was there was usually I, I uh, usually shows I didn't like on one channel were. Uh, I yeah, could switch yeah. the other channel and watch cartoons. <laughs> like when Wayne um, Head but, would come on, you could switch over and watch something else. But I remember I would never miss Batman, Batman Beyond, Superman, The Tick, and The X-Men. Um, Spider-Man, I, I think... Spider-Man, I think, was a week... was a show that came on during the week, because I don't remember watching that on the weekends. But yeah, Most the Tick, of those I, I didn't see... Uh, fully until like years later like uh m most of the dc stuff would end up re-airing on cartoon network like in the very early years of cartoon network mm -hmm. and so because at the like originally cartoon network was just a syndication channel so they would air Warner brothers owned cartoons and i remember being able to watch batman the animated series on that i think they even played it like late at night because i think there was still like some kind of controversy about the the you know the quality of the sh like you know because it it's a bit of a dark show and, yeah it had guns yeah and stuff like that so i guess parents complain but with the tick because I, I feel that there's that problem where um i have a, a very vivid memory of watching the tick on tv like quite often uh i also remember watching freakazoid a lot and they're all from like because I remember being in like different houses, like different relatives' houses that had cable, and just being basically they're over there to hang out, and the kids are put away over by the TV to not annoy the adults. <laughs> so we would watch a lot of cartoons. And yeah, I remember I didn't watch Freakazoid till it went into syndication. Great show, but I remember that uh, I had watched the Tick. I liked the Tick. I I even recall I had some Tick toys from. Whatever fast food restaurant had them, I want to say Taco Bell, because I don't think yeah, it, it was Taco Bell. Wasn't Taco because I had those. <laughs> I had like this Arthur one, which had like uh, sticky tips on the on his wings, so he would like f like crawl down the wall or something like that. And I had like yeah, this. They, they had another one that you could hold on your finger and it'd be perfectly balanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had that one too. Um, but so my point was that like I hadn't thought about the tick in years. Until all of a sudden, there was a new sitcom, you know, the, the Patrick Warburton one. And I was like, oh, I remember this. It, it was a cartoon from, like, years ago. Okay. I guess there's a live-action version now. And I never got around to watching it, because <laughs> I saw one advert, and I never saw it on TV. I, in fact, I, even, I think I even forgot what channel it was on. And uh, clearly by what you said, it was on at nine o'clock. So I definitely wouldn't have been allowed to be up to watch it. Uh, Cause I think my bedtime was like seven or something around that time. And it wasn't until I know this is controversial, but it, it wasn't until the nostalgia critic came around, like sort of his infancy, uh, like the, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, 2010, that, that kind of era. And he did like a video about like the top 10 nostalgic classics or something like that. And he had the tick on there. I was like, oh, I remember the tick. God, it's been years. And he's talking about, you know, how great it is. Like, oh, it's clever writing. And blah, 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 blah. I was like, I should revisit that show. So I took a day and like looked for episodes online. I rewatched them. And it was still freaking funny. And then years later, I met you. And now you're like the biggest tick dork in the world. So it's kind of like reverse uh, where you met me thinking you were hot shit for Godzilla. But then you met me and you were nothing. <laughs> I, I could have come and say, well, like, yeah, I know about the tick. Oh, well, I don't know that much about the tick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember I remember when they released the tick on, on DVD, I realized that I had seen more of it than I thought I had. Because I was under the impression that I missed episodes, right? Right. Because I was a kid. Of course. And I was, I was really shocked that I had seen... Almost every single episode. I, I want to say maybe I missed four episodes. <laughs> but there's also like, isn't there that strange feeling when you'd revisit a show and like there's all these episodes you never saw, so they're like brand new to you? Yeah. I always love that feeling. I, I thought that was what, what I was going to experience. And I was, I was, I was so adamant about watching the tick that I had seen almost all the episodes or, or I might've actually seen them all. I just might've forgotten them. Uh, but I remember when they came out in DVD, the seasons were missing episodes. And in the case of season two, it was missing one of my favorite episodes of that whole season. The episode where he meets uh, Galactus and they parody the Silver Surfer. Isn't that where he just like I takes mean, a bite out of the moon and, it, and again, it just yeah. stays there for the rest of the series? Yeah, that's like one of my favorite episodes. Um, 
but it wasn't on the season two disc. And the, the, the episodes following, the, there's a bite taken out of the moon. I was like, what did I miss? Did I miss one? And I think that's what ultimately led me to, to buying it, a bootleg of it on Blu-ray. I mean, I, I mean, I didn't do that. <laughs> I found it. It was on my doorstep. Um, For those who actually want a legal copy of the take <laughs> uncut, be sure to import it from the UK because the JetX label over in the UK has released the complete series uncut on DVD. So please buy that. Don't spend $60 <laughs> on a Blu-ray bootleg. Yeah, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, th this is incriminating. <laughs> oh, the horror! You but, bought something you couldn't get in the states. I love that show. I quote it on an almost daily basis. Like every time, like lights get shown in my eyes. <laughs> Mine eyes. I am momentarily blinded. <laughs> it was funny. I remember showing my my fiance the show for the first time. And we we're on, like, I think episode two. Yeah. And she turns to me and says, it's like you wrote this show. <laughs> and I think that, That's, like, the uh, highest, like, compliment you can get, especially if it's, like, one of your favorite things. I Yeah. And I was, like, I was so, like, I always tell people that. And she's, like, wow, I didn't really realize that was that much of a compliment. But, yeah, that, <laughs> that show made such an impact on me. It's influenced my humor to this day. I honestly <laughs> want to know, like, what what the equivalent to me is for that because i love that sort of you know someone watches your favorite thing and then it's like it's like you made this because again like i said it shows the impact the the property has had on you know what you do currently filmmaking or otherwise specifically in your writing i never even would have taken the tick but i guess in retrospect yeah there's a lot of elements that are very like joey humor <laughs> I think one of my favorite gags in, in the show, and I was actually disappointed they didn't do it in the in the, mo the most recent one, was the ticks like looking through Arthur's apartment, and he's like flipping stuff over because he thinks there's like he thinks there's a special switch that'll make everything <laughs> turn into like this secret agent area. Yeah, and he goes, he goes, uh, where's your hidden switch? Where's your trigger? What does your couch turn into? And he flips over the couch, and Arthur says, it turns into a bed, <laughs> and. I think that line is so funny and they do it again in the 2000 sitcom and it's just, it's such a normal line. Like it's like, it turns into a bed. It's a, it's a hide a bed, <laughs> but just the idea of like this big blue idiot just breaking through his whole <laughs> apartment. It's just, it, I don't know. It's, it's funny to me. <laughs> didn't you like, um, didn't you like tweet at the, uh, the guy who plays Arthur in the new show about that gag, and they basically confirm that it's not in it. Yeah, yeah, he said that because the, they were there was they were apparently reshooting the pilot, like adding additional scenes. Yeah, and he said that uh, that scene, like the scene of him like looking for the trigger and the hidden switches in there, but he doesn't flip over the couch. And I think that's kind of just because the no one has hide beds anymore, so it might not be that funny. No, because like a futon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Like the same. Uh, people have futons? I have a fucking futon. <laughs> Linkara has a futon. It's practically his trademark. People have futons. I mean, <laughs> granted, I haven't seen... I legit... I haven't seen a hide -a bed since the Great Muppet Caper. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that as someone who's never actually seen a hide -a bed in real life. I only ever saw it in the Great Muppet Caper. I used to have one in the '90s. Really? Uh, no, there's another joke in the animated series that I feel like, like, like another one that she, that she thought was like kind of my humor was when the ticks interrogating a, a bad guy. Mm -hmm. He goes, "What's the evil scheme?" And the the guy goes, "Well, you see, we thought we'd rob a bunch of banks, and we get a bunch of money, and then we wouldn't have to work anymore." <laughs> 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 and it, it's. It's like such like child like a child like look to crime. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And then there, like the, there's the the Punisher parody, which I think is called like it, it's not Deadshot. It's like hard something, hard target or something. Yeah, dumb and he, like, like that. he's he's always crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's got mommy issues. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think another oh. thing that is kind of. Ang Sung is I, I think if we're gonna compare the three shows. The the, the animated tick has the best theme song of all three of them. 
Yes, I agree. Especially since, correct me, but do the live action ones really have a theme song? Like, I know they have like an opening, and it's, uh, it's usually like a sort of you know standard triumphant hero theme. At least with the it, with the Warburton one, if I remember uh, correctly, the Warburton one feels like canned music. I'm not really fond of the opening of the Warburton one. I think it says a lot that I had to struggle, which would mean that it's unmemorable. Yeah, it, the the big thing with the opening of the Warburton one, it's the tick monologuing, and then there's like a, a sting at the end. Uh, the new tick, however, has uh, I actually like the theme of the new tick. I don't like it as much as the the animated series, but it's it's kind of got a ska. No, I love it. I love the uh, I love the aesthetic, the, like the whole sort of paper craft look. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like well, I mean, obviously, you and I both have an uh, affinity for ska, but at the same time, because you know the '94 tick kind of has that jazzy beboppy kind of yeah kind of thing, which kind of goes hand in hand with it. So it's definitely like a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And who knows, maybe season two might have a different intro. I don't know. A lot of shows seem to do that now, where they like slightly change the intro. Yeah, I, I the new Star Trek show has a different intro from the first season, and it really, yeah, it's it's really strange too because the stuff it adds doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really change anything. It it just feels kind of like oh, okay. I remember when the show would change its intro, it used to be kind of a bigger deal. Yeah, you know they do it all the time, and like all those anime shows, they they're constantly changing their intros, getting new songs. Yeah, I. I I don't watch that much anime. I think there's one legit. I don't know if you ever had this, but there's a show that regrettably I still watch. And I am, I am infuriated because it's been on for a decade. It's been on its ninth season right now. And they have yet to change the intro. And I feel it's crucial because in a decade, like half the cast has grown up. And, but the intro still has them in their season one, like, when they were kids, some of them, one of them even an infant, but is now like 12 years old. What show is this? Shameless on Showtime. Oh. To this day, they still use the season one intro, which is a good intro, but it's been a decade and they're still using it. And it infuriates me. It's like, first of all, it, it, what, what, like, if you know anything about Shameless, you know, it, it's a Showtime show, so it's kind of, you know, a little dirty. You know, I, I didn't realize that show is on that long. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still going. In fact, I think uh, one of the leads is leaving. Uh, em- Emmy Rossum's leaving the show after the season, so I don't even know if they're doing another season. But if they are, it's probably going to be like the actual UK show where cast members left many times to a point where the only character left was Frank Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was a it was a reboot of a. Of an English property, but the, I don't really know too much about it. I'm, I'm surprised it's been on that long. I, I actually, at this point, I like it more than UK one because at least the US one has kept a consistent cast. Because the problem with the UK one, at least for me, was the fact that by the time it was in, like, I, God, I think that thing ran for 14 seasons in the UK, and it got to a point where it's like, why are we still watching? Like, none of the Gallagher's are still on the show like the entire family (laughs) left except for frank and if you know anything about the show you kind of don't want to watch a show starring frank because he's a terrible person who plays frank in the the american william h macy plays him well yeah that's right i remember i remember seeing clips of it and i was remember thinking i don't picture william h macy in this role but he oh he's he looks very comfortable in it he's really good in that show if you've never seen an episode he's really good but should i watch the uh I know we're getting off topic, but should I watch the the British one first, or does I think not matter? I think for curiosity, it would be like you should at least see the first episode of the UK because the US and the UK kind of like The Office; they're like they're verbatim the same script, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like an interesting parallel to see the difference. Otherwise, ah, I would still just say watch the US one. But if if you end up really liking the U.S. one, you could check out the U.K. one and see where you land. Pers- at, at least for me personally, I was like, eh, I kind of prefer the U.S. one. But yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, that, like they they still use that intro, and it's infuriating because there's characters in there that, like in their first season, were like kids. But now, like in the current seasons, they're dealing with like adult situations, like you know, having sex and you know, doing adult things. But their intro still shows them as children, and that just that just 
freaks me out. It's like, no, earlier we just saw your tits, but now you're showing me an intro when you were like 14. Like, why can't you just reshoot the intro? You have everyone there. Just reshoot the fucking thing. Hell, like Roseanne did that where like they would upgrade the intro when the kids would grow up. I think they even, you know, you know, that sounds really shameless to me. (laughs) Ah, so the tick (laughs) live action show with Patrick Warburton, uh, do you actually know how I saw that show for the first time? Like, ac- I think you just told me that you went, you went back and watched it because of the Nostalgia Critic. No, no, that was the animated show. Uh, the the, oh, the okay. Warburton show. Because I told you I saw a, uh, a promo for it, but never actually saw the show on TV. I, mm-hmm. I got to see the live action tick because it was on Netflix streaming. And remember this. This was like very early Netflix stream. Like, remember, I don't know if... You, like, when did you get Netflix? I was in high school, and I remember not liking it. Like, did you have the streaming service? Um, I tried it out. I didn't like it, and mm-hmm. I started just getting DVDs from them. Right. Well, I'll explain to you is that um, in the very early... I'm going to say 2011-ish, because this was like the mm-hmm. year before... Oh, God, that actually might have been later. That might have been 2012, actually. Uh, It was around the time I moved. And we had a Netflix, like, the brand new, like, we were finally like, oh, we upgraded our Netflix because we also had, like, the mailer thing. But my mother upgraded the Netflix to get the streaming service. And the streaming service on Netflix back in the day was awful. Like, the selection was garbage and the layout was horrendous. Like... Basically, like if you go to a Netflix account now and you pick a show, you know, you have like icons, like little screenshots of the episodes to select from. You Mm -hmm. didn't you didn't have that back then. It was just this big red space. And each episode was like a little white, like ticker. So it said like S1, E1, S1, E2 and stuff like that. And you had to select the episode. And some shows didn't even have all their episodes on there because they were still trying to get you to like get the dvd mailer so like a show could have like five of its seven episodes in its first season to entice you to be like hey you can see the whole thing if you get the dvd the tick was that show where they only had like some of its episodes (laughs) they didn't even have all of them but that was the only way i was able to watch it and actually see the show that i heard was like oh one of the best you know canceled too soon shows i always saw it on like all those lists of the best uh, too good to be canceled shows like Firefly and the Clerks animated series and uh, oh what's that other one Party Down I think the other one is canceled too soon I never heard of Party Down well that's you know what I mean those kinds of lists where people rank what they think are great shows that only had like one or two seasons if they even finished their first season some of them were canceled before they even ran them all because it wasn't the tick that didn't they not air all the episodes yeah they didn't air the second episode which honestly i think it's one of the worst episodes of the whole season is that the one where it's basically like the sort of origin no no the 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 origin which episode is that wait what are you talking about you You know the one where they're like on the roof and they're like telling oh the one with the terror uh the terror you know where they actually have the terror in it yeah, the terror. It, it, that's the second episode, and the, the guy who plays the terror is uh, not a bad choice. He played Quark in Deep Space Nine, but I just I don't like that episode. So a lot of the jokes don't land for me. Right, but you can you can tell they're figuring out those characters. So I think it was a smart choice to not air that episode second, but then they started airing. Correct up. me, didn't you? Didn't you once say about the Warburton show that you felt? Uh, I guess appropriate considering who produced it, but didn't you say something along the lines of it felt too Seinfeld? Yes, and that was that was a, for a combination of reasons. One, they didn't have the budget they needed to do what they wanted to do, and then two, they actually had Seinfeld writers. <laughs> the, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> but there's a part where it's like, is that necessarily a bad thing? Because like Seinfeld's a great show, and I, I know what you mean. It's like it's not comparable to the animated tick, and at this point, not even not even comparable to the Amazon show, which is. Oh yeah, well I think I think the like I said the 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 tick from the comics grew into the tick from the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Tick from the sitcom grew from the cartoon. So it's it's it, the tick is a character that is constantly evolving. Right. And the tick in the latest series is a combination of all three. I think in in that series they kind of make the tick more helpless. He he's uh, he's more dependent on Arthur than ever before. Where the the they were basically roommates. In the animated series, but in in the sitcom, they- would you also like argue 
the, I feel like, at least compared to the cartoon that I can recall in the new show, that the Ticks played a bit more dumb than usual. Yes, it, it, like it, in the comics, he he was a character who just wanted to fight, and then they kind of made him a bit more dumb in the TV series. There, he's like he's obsessed with justice, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't understand things, and then he gets even stupider in this in the sitcom where he he needs Arthur to function as a. a at all or else he'll just sit on the floor and talk to a toilet <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's funny but like <laughs> I, I feel like because i don't i don't want the podcast to feel like we're shitting on the warbird show because i know it has its fans and oh yeah no obviously the warbird show is, like i like the warbird it's far show. from bad we we i mean yeah, you know we like warbird enough that we want to see him appear in the new show yeah, especially since he's a producer. That is true. I I I thought that was really unfair because I remember when the new Tick was coming out, and they were like, in a way, I feel like a problem with the Warburton show is that there's kind of a toxic side of that cult following, you know? Because like, remember there was that whole thing about like, oh, I will not watch the show because Warburton's not playing the role. Why? <laughs> <sighs> Anyone yeah. else should be allowed to don the blue jumpsuit. Yeah, and I, I love Peter Serafinowicz as the Tick. He, Sar- he Serafinowicz. Is... Serafinowicz. Fer- Ferrisinowicz. <laughs> Peter Serafinowicz. I actually had to spend time to, to figure out how to pronounce that name. Serafinowicz. Yes, okay. Serafinowicz. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I oh, think... He's fantastic. I think, in a way, the fact, because the only like notable role is like that he's the voice of Darth Maul, not even like the the actor, because Ray Park was the body and Peter was the voice. And <laughs> he's that guy in the first Guardians film. You know, he's in the trailer like, uh, what a bunch of a-holes. He's that guy. Yeah. And he's obviously like bigger in England, because I think he's like a stand-up comedian in England. And I like that for the tick, like that was what I was excited about. Uh, I think you and I probably, when they put out the first pilot for the Prime show, and I was like, I like that it's not, like a big name they could have gotten anybody to play the tick to sell on the you know what i mean yeah like oh so and so is the tick but they didn't do that they're like we like this peter guy we think he's good for the character kind of thing and i really because that that was a risk because the tick could have not been picked up you know i love what he brings to that character too because he sounds very much like townsend coleman um who's the original tick Who's also in but the show? He, yeah, he play he plays Midnight, the atheist dog. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I just love that they they found a way. Like, let's get Townsend in here. Why the hell not? <laughs> <laughs> but he 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 sounds similar, comparable to Townsend Coleman. Mm-hmm. But he also brings this Adam West, you know, uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? He, he has like this. Very Adam West way of delivering his dialogue. He has this kind of like uh, campy charm without being too like tongue in cheek winking at the camera, which which is what I really like. I, I'm glad you said Adam West because I I actually thought of that. So I was like, he's kind of sort of channeling his inner West with this performance, but he's not like he's not you know going like over the top or chewing the scenery kind of thing. So yeah, he, he's not, I, w- I wouldn't say he's doing an impression of Townsend or Warburton or, or West. Oh no, no. But it, it but it's definitely like, it, he's definitely got like a stew, uh, a stewing pot of all the other ticks, but still bringing his own flavor into the mix. Yeah. Which is what I like. And honestly, at this point, he might be my favorite interpretation of the character. Uh, Townsend would be right under him, and Warburton would be right under that. And I think is I like all three of these guys. Like I feel like every time you rank shit, people are honestly like, "Oh, they hate that." I don't hate Warburton's tick. I love all the ticks. I'm just really partial to Serafinowicz right now. I'm really loving the new show. I mean, it's one of the very few shows where. Well, obviously, it's probably the same for you, where, you know, I get excited when they announce, like, a new clip or something or other about the next season. And, hell, weren't you and I upset because people kept referring to the second half of the first season as season two? Yeah, uh, season 1B, or season (laughs) 1A and season 1B. People kept on calling it season one and season two. 
guys are ridiculous. Uh, shows can have mid-season breaks to recuperate, especially with a show like The Tick, where I can only imagine the budget on that show is probably pretty big, at least for an Amazon show. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nowhere near the, the other superhero comedy that they're producing, The Boys, but that's a completely different animal. Um, this show, I, I knew I love about The Tick is that the creator has been involved with every single version that we've seen. Which, how often can you say that? Like, correct me, I'm assuming because it's underground, like, Ben Edlin must have, like, sole ownership of it. Like, that can only be the way, right? Otherwise, there, it feels like there'd be legal repercussions for wanting to do new versions of The Tick. Well, there kind of is. Um well, there's certain characters that he doesn't own, like uh, like Deflator Mouse, he doesn't own, and um, Lady Liberty, right? American Made, oh, yeah. American, American Made, yeah. Lady, Lady Liberty, Liberty was the other show. Uh, Batman Well, he can't use Batman Well in this new show either. And it's funny because those two were composite characters because they couldn't get the other characters. <laughs> but at least <laughs> I actually like Batman Well a hell of a lot more than I like Deflator Mouse. I actually agree with you. I actually agree with you. I prefer Batman. Well, I think he's a better. I think he's a funnier character. Um, yeah, and I actually I feel, I feel reverse with the other one, Captain Liberty and American Maid. I think American Maid is funnier than Captain Liberty. Yeah, but Captain Liddy, Liberty is hotter. But <laughs> <laughs> the um, but but I'm assuming that Ben owns like the rights to Tick and Arthur, which is really all he ever needs when he's doing these. He, he owns the rights to all the characters that were in the comic books. So right. Tick, Arthur, uh, Chairface, Chippendale, Barry the Tick. Right. All the really important ones, in my opinion. The, the Tick is not actually owned by, like, a major comic book. It's not like DC or Marvel. It's owned by, I believe, New England Comics, which is not a comic book company. It's, it's a comic book store. Why? Okay, first of all, why didn't he call it New Edland? Well, he doesn't own it. <laughs> I, I I believe it's just literally in New England. So it's like an underground comic thing. Like he he's a writer no, for it. it. It's 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 not a it's not a comic book company. It's, really? It's it's literally a comic book store. You're serious? It's just a store? Yeah, it's just a store. That's 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 as hipster as you can get. <laughs> yeah, and and I, that's why I always find the story of Ben England. And this character is kind of like just the 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 ultimate nothing to something story. He made the tick as as a way to promote the comic book store, and people yeah. kind of loved it and asked him to make his own little indie comic about it. In a way, like sort of a unofficial mascot for that store. Yeah, like an unofficial mascot, and he he looks the original tick looks more like Barry the Tick. Right. Um, eventually, enough people fell in love with it that he got, started making the animated series. And then he, you know, he he's had just a, a really interesting career after that. He worked on Supernatural, Venture Brothers. He he's you know he's he's a success story. I, I have a lot of respect for the guy. You know, just he had this little silly idea and it just blew up. And he he has just had one success after the other. Well, I mean, it's kind of like how Eastman and Laird had that silly idea for the for the Ninja Turtles comic back in the day, and now it's like a multi million dollar franchise. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they were just like these these two kids in New Hampshire who you know just had a just basically just made a parody comic for like all the yeah, all the, the Frank Miller stuff. It was a parody of Daredevil. Yeah. Oh yeah, was, was it a Frank Miller's run of Daredevil that they were spoofing? Yeah, because in, instead of the 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 vat hitting going into his eyes, it went it bounced off his head and went to the sewer and mutated some turtles. <laughs> and the villain the villain in Daredevil is the hand. <laughs> <laughs> so the villain in the comic in, in Ninja Turtles is the foot. Yeah, <laughs> and actually one of the bigger elements in the early the early comic books of the tick is also a, a parody of Frank Miller's daredevil. There's Electra, And I think it's a million gazillion ninjas is the, the comic book issue. Right. So with that, I think one thing that we should talk about definitely, because we, I think at this point we've talked about all the different iterations and like our getting introduced to them, our feelings on them. And I, th I think the general thing is we like tick. We like all the tick. Yeah. Uh, I still need to read the comics. I think it's good that you're pulling me away because I could probably talk about the tick for hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what we gotta we gotta really talk about the Prime Show because obviously it's the one that's on. It's the one that's in the public conscience right now, um, and obviously our speculations because there's probably I mean you probably have a laundry list of things you want to see in season two. I really only have one request. I want to see Chairface Chippendale. Maybe not season two. 
but I definitely want to see them at some point because I really am just curious as to how they'll do it. Will it, will it be a digital chair? Will it be a practical effect? And what kind of voice will they give him? Because in the original cartoon, it was the late, great Tony J, who many might remember from Hunchback of Notre Dame as Claude Frollo and uh, Megabyte in Reboot. He had that very distinct, deep, raspy sound to his voice. So, mm-hmm. like, I ask you, who would you like to step into the chair face Chip and Dale shoes? Oh, man. Um like who could you who could you see and I, I, this should be important it shouldn't have to be like a tony j like it should just be someone who can play the character i know i i recommended this this uh this guy in a previous episode of pan and scan but uh, keith david oh i'd love I think keith david do, i think he'd do fantastic i'm in love with that man's voice <laughs> who isn't who isn't come on but like he he's not he's not the chair face, like he doesn't have that British accent and all that. Oh, he but, he he he's an actor. He'll figure it out. I don't think he needs to have the British accent. I think he could just do his voice, and it would still it would still embody that character the same way. You know, on, on that uh, same side, Ron Perlman's a good choice too. Oh yeah, that that is a good that is a good one. And, and that'll hell, be his, his second tick appearance. And I know I don't want to make it seem like, oh, because of Hellboy. But honestly, if they also want to go with like TV actors, David Arbor could probably do it as well. I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, mean, I I know we, we're on different viewpoints on the new Dare, uh, the new uh, Hellboy. Yeah. But I, I actually think the guy playing Hellboy in this new movie, despite the fact that I don't want to see it, I think he's a perfect choice for it. No, I agree. I, I'm still, I mean, like I said, I'm not. I'm not too excited, but I'm still going to see it just because it's only fair that I at least see it. Uh, but mm-hmm. I mean, you've, you know, I think you've said, I swear on social media, you've talked about uh, Barry and how you really want it to be Patrick Warburton. Oh yeah. So we've been talking about him a couple times in this. It might be confusing in the world of the tick. He's another guy with the same name as the tick in the comics. There are more superheroes than normal people. So there, there's a chance that you might meet another superhero with your name, and that's exactly what happens in an ep- in an issue um, where he meets another Tick, and they fight for whoever keeps the name. And in the comic, he loses his name, and the Tick gets to keep his name, and he has to go by Barry. And Barry hires like a bunch of assassin assassins to kill the Tick, <laughs> um, which is something I hope happens because that doesn't happen in the cartoon. But I hope that happens in the season two, where they introduce Barry as the Tick, and they for somehow have to fight for the name. <laughs> and I I hope they go that route with season two because it's more serialized. I would love to see that, and like that could actually lead into Chairface because in in the comic he hires the Terror to to kill the Tick, and since they already did the Terror, he could easily hire Chairface. You know? Yeah. Now. Because I, I can't recall what characters are from the comics and what was made for the cartoon as someone who didn't read the comics. So were there characters in the cartoon that I'm probably not going to make it in for legal reasons uh, that you would still like to see, like a wish list of characters you'd love to see? Well, the big one would be would be Chairface, the Terror, and Barry. Mm-hmm. And those were all in the comics. I'm trying to think of, of one that I, that I really like. I guess multiple Santas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> With a name like that, how can you not? <laughs> um, he's a Santa that can multiply himself. Uh, it's, it's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say the the booger guy, but I think he's in the original comics. Or is he? If he isn't, if he isn't, the 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 alien who makes him is definitely in the comics. Who is the um? I think it's like the second episode of the cartoon. The the the, the guy who who <laughs> turns into a giant dinosaur. Oh, dinosaur Neil. That's a dinosaur <laughs> Neil. Now, was he in the comics or was he a cartoon exclusive? I I believe that was a cartoon exclusive. Ah, damn, because dinosaur Neil would be hilarious. <laughs> which I love that Dot gets married to him. <laughs> <laughs> was because I feel like um the. They had like an acronym for you know the really big guy in in the new show wasn't it like very large the VLM wasn't it the very large yeah. man <laughs> VLM like, the very large man is, is is that like their version of Neil No actually his name's Cliff I believe yeah that was actually a character in a spinoff of the Tick really called 
Yeah, that was a that was a character in the Chainsaw Vigilante, and it's it's I've read the Chainsaw Vigilante. It's it's fine. I don't feel like there's a lot you can do with that character, but the big takeaway from it was the VLM, the Very Large Man. And uh, there's a part in the comic where he, uh, the Very Large Man, tries to call someone for help, but because he's so big, his voice is, sounds really really slow over the phone. Right. So they have to like speed it up. So I remember when I was watching the the Amazon show, I was like, wait. That's 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 recycled from the the only the only really good part of, of uh, Chainsaw Vigilante. See, I I wish I was able to just watch these like with you because I'd be getting that experience of a guy who has a, a wider uh, encyclopedic knowledge of the comic side of that world that I don't know. So that becomes infinitely more interesting to me watching that. Well, I think, like I said, like I said before, the the the, the Tick comics. Are, are very rough around the edges and they're not even finished like sure there's comics that came after but they're not made by <laughs> were they ever end. put into print like like paperback collections trade paperback yeah yeah you can get a trade of uh, the original 12 issues and then the uh, fan made 13th issue and then there's other trades of like other comics um oh i forget what the other ones i think it's like neil the ninja is is another character that got his own comic series along with chainsaw vigilante but if I recall, they, they never finished those story arcs. So there's really not a reason to get them unless you're a crazy t- Tick fan. So uh, my my copies are coming on Friday. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I've, I've read digital copies of all those comics. And they're, they're interesting. I'd like to own them. But I'm not in a big hurry to get the, uh, the spinoffs. Also, personally, I'd like to see Sewer Urchin come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. That... <laughs> I had a toy of sewer urchin as a kid. <laughs> I yeah, just love that, that it's just it's just Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, very bad, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's a cartoon exclusive. So, I'm sure yeah, he that is. would definitely be one. Batman, well, and sewer urchin. I'm sure he is, but I mean, it, it's a wish list. It does. It, it, we we can pretend that there's no legal repercussions for bringing them in, but I mean, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, the, the again, the main one I want is is Chairface Chippendale. But in, in a perfect world, I'd also like to see Sewer Urchin come back, but I can't have happiness, so <laughs> we, we can't <laughs> we can't do that. How um, how long would you like to see the show go on for the new one? Mm, at least give me five seasons. And and I and I say five seasons. I say five seasons to essentially give us a five season of a show for a show you promised us five seasons for and we didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> that being Ash versus Evil Dead. Like if you can give me five seasons of the tick, I will slightly forgive you cutting off Ash versus Evil Dead at three when you were supposed to give us five. Are, well, are you talking about just like God? Like God canceling Ash vs. <laughs> Evil Dead because they're owned by two different companies. <laughs> well, um, what I'm saying is that, like, you know, same kind of thing. You know, a cult icon gets a really good TV so- sort of reboot because Ash vs. Evil Dead is kind of a reboot. I mean, not completely. Well, every every installment of Evil Dead is kind of a everything reboot. is a soft reboot. Is is my point? Is like, you know, because both are cult icons and both are on plat, both are on streaming platforms that you have to pay extra to have to even see the show in the first place. You have like you have no other options. So yeah, I I, I feel five is a good run. I wouldn't want it to yeah, go I, too long because I don't want like ten seasons. I want five at least. Um, minimum minimum, just give me three. I know you said that you actually prefer the the new show over the animated series, and I'm teetering on that. Yeah, because I I'm in I, I, there, there, the nostalgia factor with the original it's strong. There's but if you were to make five seasons of this show, five more seasons of tick content that I've never seen before, that might be enough to push me over the edge and go okay, <laughs> the Amazon the show tick. is the best. That's the best tick. Hap, like in a way, I see that happening because I think Amazon one of its longest running shows is only just now ending, which I believe is the man in the high castle. If I'm not mistaken, it had like three seasons in it. Yeah, it has uh, its fourth season is its last. So they've just done four seasons of a show. They could maybe push a show to five. Um, yeah. 
But even, even if it just has one season more than the uh, the cartoon, because really it should, I feel this one should be the longest running one, like the one that gets the most amount of time spent on it. And yeah. I, I feel like, I think we talked about this when it came out, it was, like, it, it was kind of the perfect time for a Tick reboot to come out. Because, you know, ev- you know, superheroes are everything right now. So it yeah. just made sense to bring back something that, you know, be- the perfect superhero uh, satirical counterpart. It's it's the best one, arguably. So Yeah, it's my, it's, it's my favorite. Oh, yeah. And hell, like, we also, it, it, at the same time, we had that uh, long uh, run of very successful superhero TV shows. Like, you had the DC stuff on the WB, and you had the Netflix stuff, like the Daredevils and the Jessica Jones. So, again, it was a great kind of contrast to be like, well, here's the tick. You know, the, 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 the true blue greatest uh, superhero satire you'll ever see. <laughs> And it, yeah, and, and I remember, I remember they they changed the tone a little bit from the original pilot because if you, if you recall the original pilot, the color correction was a lot darker and was a lot grittier looking. And when they actually released the show, they brightened up the color. But at the time, it mirrored a lot of the the shows at Ron. It mirrored Daredevil specifically with and, with how. And dark to me, it was. that's why I thought it was funny because you know it it's oh it, yeah it, it's shot like it's taking itself seriously, but it's the tick. So you can't take it yeah. seriously, which is what I thought worked. I understand why they did it, and I have no complaints. Cause oh yeah, I sh- loved it. You can go back to my original video where I talk about yeah. it. I loved that they did that, and it, you know they changed it, and I think it was smart for them to change it with subsequent episodes. But it, it still works. It wasn't like they they gave away some sort of artistic integrity when they changed it. No, it's still funny. It's still great. In fact, I think the change uh, was was uh, partly Ben Edlin, right? I believe so. Yes. Yes. With that, I think I feel like that's all we can really say. I mean, obviously, we could go on for like four hours about the take, especially you, because <laughs> yeah. I know you have a lot <laughs> to talk about. But I, I think the main goal, which is, if you haven't seen any tech, which I mean, I would genuinely be surprised if nobody who watches your channel has seen a single version. They have to at least seen one, right? There's been three mm-hmm. iterations. You have to have at least seen one. Uh, but if you haven't. By all means, go seek them out. I think you can find uh, the anime tick. I think there's episodes on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, yeah, someone's always uploading episodes on YouTube. I, I think. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Warburton shows on Hulu. It's. I think it's on a streaming site. Uh, yeah, it's on Crackle right it's now. It's on Crackle. That's the one. Uh, if you have Crackle, but I mean, who does? Um, but hey, if you have Crackle, you can go find The Tick uh, with Patrick Warburton. But if you have an Amazon Prime account, you, I honestly think it personally my takeaway: Check out the Amazon show. I honestly think it's the best one. And in a way, I feel like because of today's uh, TV audience, I think it's a great introduction to The Tick. Because uh, it's mm-hmm. catered more to again the the current uh, TV audience, and if you really like what you see, check out the older stuff. See where it started with the uh, the comic books. Uh, check out the cartoon show that basically influenced a lot of the other interpretations. And out of curiosity, see the Patrick Warburton show to see if maybe you're on the same side as. Eh, I mean, we like it, but other things have come out that we like a little bit more <laughs> from it. Yeah, I mean like there's some people that are fanatical about that Patrick Warburton show. So it's got its fans. So oh, yeah. just cuz yeah. we don't just cuz we're not like the biggest fans of it mm-hmm. doesn't mean you won't absolutely love it because Hell, I know people you, that you you might even obsessed. hate the Amazon show and love the Warburton show. More power to you. Cuz I mean we 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 don't we don't have a problem with that cuz we're right. I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, check it out. It's a great show. All the shows are great shows. All all great in their own special little way. And in a way, it's it's Joey to blame for getting me back into the tick because of his fanaticness. Is that even a word? Fanaticness? Fanatical? I'm not sure, but you've helped though. You bought me you bought me a hat. <laughs> I did. That's right. I bought you the hat for your birthday, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was my last birthday. Not not the one that happened a couple days ago, but yeah, the yeah, one yeah. before. Yeah, I bought you a tick hat uh, uh, from what it was from like the press kit when they were showing it off at uh, San Diego Comic Con that year. And I think you have the glow in the dark Funko Pop, don't you? 
Yeah, I hate Funko Pops, and I have it. You basically, uh, oh, you 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 bought the press DVD off eBay, like the only physical disc of the show, and it's not available to the public. You're out of your mind. But hey, he loves <laughs> he loves his tick. I love my Cowboy Bebop, so we all have that thing. We'll spend shit loads of money on because we support it in any way we can. Thank you all for listening. I have no idea what our next subject's going to be, but. I suppose, like uh, Joey has said before, give us a subject in the comments, and we'll most likely turn it into an episode. Uh, what do you think, Joey? I, I love hearing you guys talk. Uh, I, I, one thing I, I always like is interaction. I always try to respond to your comments, so feel free to, to write something down below. I, I will most likely respond to it. He'll give yeah. it a heart. <laughs> Most likely. I'll give it a heart. If, if I don't respond to it, I'll definitely give it a heart. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some form of acknowledgement. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right. Thank you for tuning in to the Pan and Scan podcast. Feel free to check out previous episodes in the series and support the creators by subscribing to Joey Hollywood Films and Aficionados Chris on YouTube. Remember, please be kind and rewind. <laughs>